The President, Le président. please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. Very good morning, Le Président. everyone. On behalf of the trial chamber, and as the president of the trial chamber, I would like to warmly welcome the co-prosecutors, legal lawyers for the civil parties and counsel for the accused who are present today. The trial chamber is scheduled to conduct two separate hearings La today, de première instance a hearing today and another for tomorrow session. The first hearing is meant to consider une autre the comments by the experts La we appointed by the trial chamber to review the health and fitness of Expert, Mr. Nguyen Chia, chambre, et chargé the report Nguyen Chia. of which has already been submitted to the chamber very recently. Le rapport d'évaluation médicale a été remis à la chambre tout récemment. Document E256. E the second hearing today, e which is a subsequent hearing, is scheduled to be conducted this afternoon or tomorrow morning. During the second session of the hearing, the Chamber will provide opportunity to parties in K0 to comment on the impacts or the result of the expert report concerning Mr. Nguyen's health and fitness to stand trial, and also the severance of the case, uh, the decision of which is to be rendered in due course. I may now declare the hearing open. Greffier of the trial chamber is now instructed to report to the chamber on the status of the parties to the proceedings today, including the experts appointed by the trial chamber document E2. The greffier. Good morning, Mr. President, and thank you, Your Honour. Today, the 25th of March 2013, every party to the proceeding is present except to Mr. Nguyen Chia, who is present, but in his holding cell. The two experts the Chamber are going to hear their testimony are present in their waiting rooms, a waiting call from the chamber. The two experts have already confirmed that uh, they have not been in any relationship with any of the civil parties or the accused. The experts will take the oath before the chamber in a moment. The president, thank you. The Chamber wishes to also inform the parties in the proceedings that Mr. Nguyen Chia is present through remote participation because of his health concerns. And according to the report by the treating doctor at the Khmer Rouge Tribunal, um, he emphasizes that uh, Mr. Nguyen Chia has uh, high blood pressure and cannot Monsieur remain Nguyen seated for a long a period of time because he feels dizzy. For that, the trial chamber allows him to be excused and that he is now asked to observe the proceedings from his holding cell. The reasons behind this decision are plausible, so Mr. Nguyen Chia is now permitted to observe the proceedings from there. AV booth officers are now instructed to ensure that the AV equipments are properly connected to the holding cell where Mr. Nunchi can observe the whole proceedings and indeed these proceedings are 
normal as what we have already done in the past. Regarding hearing number one, the trial chamber would like to also note that its decision dated the 15th of November 2011, document E115. Stroke 3, the chamber ruled that Mr. Nunji is fit to stand trial. The experts are reappointed to review the health and fitness of Mr. Nunji by the trial chamber because the chamber notes that uh, Mr. Nunji on several occasions had requested that he be excused and that he be allowed to observe the proceedings from his holding cell through video link. For that reason, it is really important and fair that Mr. Nunji should be his health and fitness to stand trial conditions are reviewed and assessed d'examiner l'état de santé et l'aptitude d'être jugé And uh, on the 13th of June 2011, document E62-3, the experts already made their point concerning their assessment on one occasion back then. And during the hearing on the 31st of August 2011, matters concerning his health condition and also treatment also been discussed. The trial chamber would like to also note that through the order issued on the 18th of December 2012, Professor John Campbell, Dr. Sina Fassel, and Dr. Wood Lina were appointed to assess the fitness to stand trial and the health conditions of Mr. Nguyen and Yeng Sari. At that time, the chamber also requested that the, the parties concerned submit uh, their submissions concerning the scope of the assessment and that such submissions should be filed no later than the 21st of January 2013 due to the fact that Mr. Yingsari passed away at the hospital Cambodian Friendship Soviet Soviet Hospital on the 14th of March 2013 after he had been admitted to the hospital on the 4th of Après March 2013. Du For that mars, reason, the trial chamber yes. hearing today focuses more on the report uh, submitted uh, by the experts after they had uh, reviewed the health and fitness On of Mr. Nguyen Chia alone only. Et les recommandations des experts in response to the Sir trial Nunchia chamber, Sumba. counsels for Mr. Uh, Nunchia submitted their La submission requesting the chamber to and review and assess some health implications and make sure that the assessment uh, is meaningful and the symptoms uh, that the council wished uh, the experts to reassess include uh, dizziness les symptômes and fatigue uh, and problem reading because Nunji complained that he could not read uh, beyond five or the six lines, for example. And third, uh, that uh, Mr. Nunji has eyesight problem. And la fourth, uh, Mr. Nunji has some place, uh, some short-term memory. And fifth, uh, he has problem concentrating and also has problem with time orientation. Et and sixth, he has some... Sixième problem 
like urinating problem because he on some occasions uh, urinates uh, irregularly and he continues to be fatigued and he also has problem uh, he feel uneasy uh, turning uh, moving his head uh, and there are a few more points that are uh, stated in the application by uh, counsel for Mr. Nunchir uh, being uh, well received uh, by the trial chamber. Sa et la chambre en tient the trial chamber also receives a uh, request by the co-prosecutors asking the chamber to assess the mental and physical fitness of the accused person, document E256-3. The trial chamber uh, also informs uh, the witness de support de section, uh, vi oh, the rescue unit, in short, uh, informing the, uh, the section that uh, the chamber would like uh, the experts to be reappointed to review the health condition and the fitness to stand trial of uh, the accused person at that time. Uh, Dr. Huotlina said that he would be available and present during the proceeding when health of Mr. Nunchi uh, was to be reviewed. And the trial chamber agreed to appoint two national experts, medical experts. And uh, finally, the chambers uh, assigned uh, two experts, rather, Dr. John Campbell and uh, Professor aussi ont été désignés, uh, Dr. John Campbell Sina and Dr. Fassel to Sina review Fassel and uh, assess uh, the fitness to stand trial of uh, the accused. Uh, and noting that later on, Dr. Huotlina was not available. So these two experts uh, were the only experts who conducted the assessment uh, on health condition and fitness to stand trial of Mr. Nguyen Chia. In the reports filed uh, by the Expert. Dans leur rapport. The chamber has now gathered uh, enough information to rule upon the condition of Mr. Nguyen Chia. Motif suffisant pour se prononcer sur and the chamber will discuss this matter in a moment. La chambre en discutera prochainement. According to the provision provided, uh, the hearing is to be conducted in public as much as possible. However, the chamber is very mindful of the rights uh, to access to information and the rights of the accused. Nonetheless, today's hearing is meant to be in public. If Mais parties would like part of the proceedings si to be held in closed session, they should do so in writing, and the chamber will rule upon the request in the interest of justice to see whether the hearing shall be conducted si in closed session or in clos. public. We hope uh, we have made this clear to the parties of the proceedings and indeed regarding the privacy of the accused person, the chamber may consider holding the hearing Et in camera. And also, we balance the rights of the public uh, to access to information. The chamber would like to ask counsels uh, for Mr. Nguyen Chia to see whether they agree that the following session will be conducted in 
public. Mr. President, good morning, Your Honours. Uh, we agree that this hearing should be held in uh, public uh, in, uh, in principle. However, there might be specific medical details that we um, might not be very specific about, um, if, you, if, you, if you get my drift. Mais peut-être serait-il idéal de ne pas aller dans tous les détails, si vous voyez ce que je veux dire. The President, uh, thank you, Council. Le Président. The Chamber wishes to also inform the parties to the proceedings that uh, during today's hearing, when the Chamber examines La Chambre. the report by both experts, the Chamber will be putting questions first uh, to the experts, and the session, the floor will be given to counsel for Mr. Nguyen. Who will pose the questions to the experts, then the floor will be given to the defense of Mr. Nguyen. Later on, the Chamber will hand over to the prosecution and the legal lawyers for the civil parties to be able to put some questions to the experts. And finally, Chamber, the Chamber will also give the final opportunity to the co-lawyers for the accused uh, to have the final et words if they la would wish to do so. Aura le dernier mot si elle souhaite le prendre. The final submission by lead co uh, by rather by councils for Nunji will be allowed at the same time co-prosecutors and legal lawyers for the civil parties would also be allowed opportunity to do accordingly. La défense de Nunji, les procureurs et les parties civiles auront la possibilité de faire des The president, uh, court officer, is now directed to bring in the experts. Veuillez faire rentrer les experts au prétoire. The President, uh, very good morning, Mr. Experts. Bonjour, First of all, I would like uh, to put a few questions, in particular, to Professor John Campbell. Vous poser quelques questions, en particulier au Dr. Mr. Campbell. Professor, is your name Dr. Campbell. John Campbell? Vous appelez-vous John Campbell? It is. Réponse. Oui. Thank you. How old are you, Professor? Question. 67. Réponse. 67 ans. Thank you. Question. What is your nationality? New Zealand. Quelle est votre citoyenneté? Réponse. Je suis néo-zélandais. Thank you. Question. Where do you live? Où, où, où habitez-vous? Indonesian and New Zealand. En Nouvelle Zélande. Thank you. Question. What is your occupation? Quelle est votre profession? Professor of Medicine and Physician Réponse. at the University of Otago and the Dunedin Otago Hospital. Et à l'hôpital aussi. Thank you. According to the report Question. by the graphic of the trial chamber, you 
are not in Leur relationship uh, with any of the proceeding uh, of the parties to the proceedings, including the civil parties and the accused uh, person, Nguyen Chia. Is that correct? Chia, est est le that is correct. We said exactly. The president, uh, professor, according to your recollection or our recollection, you appeared before the chamber to give testimonies in case file 002 on three occasions already, trois fois déjà dans le dossier one on the 29th of deux, August 2011, 2011, and the 30th of August 2012, and another one on another occasion. Is that correct? That's exact. That is correct. Réponse. C'est exact. The President, uh, thank you. We would like to proceed to put some questions to Dr. Sina Fazel. Is that your full name? Uh, uh, Sina Fazel, is that the way uh, your yes, name is spelled? Yes, it is. Question. Mr. Fazel, how Question. old are you now? Forty-four years old. Question. Question. Uh, what is your nationality? British. The President, thank you. Where do you live and uh, what is your occupation? I live in Oxford in the UK and I'm a forensic psychiatrist based at the University of Oxford and the local hospitals in Oxford. Thank you. Dr. Fazel, according to the report by the Grefshi of the trial chamber, you are not in a relationship with an accused or civil party to the proceedings, in particular, accused person Nguyen Chia. Is that true? That is true. Thank you. To the best of the chamber's recollection, Dr. Fazel, you have been Dr. Fazel. involving in the testi uh, in giving testimonies to the chamber on four occasions Vous avez la chambre at this fois. court, the latest of which oui, is on the 8th of November 2012. Is that le 8 correct? 2012. It's exact. I can't remember the exact date. I think it may have been October. Um, the last occasion I was giving testimony in the court, but um, yes, I have given testimony before in the court on a number of occasions. The President, uh, thank you very much. The reason the chamber wished uh, to inform you of your presence uh, during these hearings uh, is because uh, we would like to cut short uh, questions concerning your qualifications so by referring to the records that uh, you already been here on several occasions. The Chamber has uh, grounds uh, to confirm that you qualified uh, to give testimony before this Chamber. 
de conclure que According vous avez les compétences rules, nécessaires pour déposer aujourd'hui. D'après le règlement intérieur, the the chamber, vous devez prêter serment avant de déposer. Êtes-vous prêt à le faire Ah, sure. Réponse. Oui. Mr. Matteo, could you please uh, administer the oath uh, taking Monsieur le greffier. session to, to the two experts? Veuillez faire prêter serment. Good morning. Uh, Professor Campbell, please repeat after me. I solemnly declare that, that I will assist the chamber honestly, confidentially, and to the best of my ability. I solemnly declare that I will assist the chamber honestly, confidentially, and to the best of my ability. Je jure solennellement. Thank you, Dr. Fazel. Dr. Fazel, repeat after me. I solemnly declare that I will assist the chamber honestly, confidentially, and to the best of my ability. I solemnly declare that I will assist the chamber honestly, confidentially, and to the best of my ability. Thank you. The chamber wishes to advise the two experts. La chambre s'adresse à présent aux deux experts. The chamber wishes to advise the two parties that Any experts may respond to the question put by any si member of the bench. If you uh, juges, feel necessary and the question is of natural, experts, um, of a general nature, uh, however, uh, the, if the question is directed to any particular si uh, expert, then you may respond to that question accordingly. And the same is uh, for the parties. When they même put any particular question to the uh, expert, then the expert in question should respond to the question, si however, uh, the other expert may add additional uh, comments, uh, that répondre, is the general uh, procedures in relation to uh, voilà your response uh, to the various questions put by parties as well as members of the bench. And to proceed, I now hand over the floor to Judge Percival Cartwright uh, to put the questions uh, to the two experts in relation to the uh, assessment as well as the report by the two experts submitted to the chamber. You may proceed, uh, Judge. Thank you, President. Uh, I will start by reviewing uh, the previous examinations that either of you have made of this accused Nguyen Chia, uh, because we are well aware you have both been here on previous occasions examining other accused. Professor Campbell, I think that you examined Nguyen Chia previously uh, on two occasions in 2011, uh, providing the court as the President has said, President, with a report uh, 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 on the 25th of August 2011, August 2011 uh, uh, and subsequently being examined par suite, uh, by the um, court and the parties uh, on juges that report. Is that correct? That is correct, although the date I have on my uh, report is the 13th of June 2011. Yes, that's, uh, that's accurate. Uh, now, uh, you have uh, more recently 
returned to Phnom Penh to examine Nguyen Chia, uh, and that has been recorded in your most recent uh, report, which has now been filed and is before us today for examination. Uh, and that is uh, the report dated the 20th of March 2013, prepared in conjunction with Dr. Sina Fazel. Is that correct? That is correct. Dr. Fazel, can you tell the court, please, whether you have ever previously, to this most recent examination, uh, examined and reported on Nuanchia? I have not. Thank you. Now, no. in respect of the present report, uh, it uh, covers two major areas. Uh, the first I will loosely describe as Nguyen Chia's physical condition, uh, and the second is his uh, mental health and cognitive status. Uh, so I'm going to deal first with the physical aspects of Nguyen Chia's health status. Uh, starting uh, at his age, uh, according to the records that the court holds, Nguyen Chia was born on the 7th of July 1926, which makes him 80 Six dit, years of age now il a and 87 in July. Uh, is that as you have um, recorded for your own purposes? Yes, that has been our understanding. Effectivement, Thank ce sont you. les informations dont nous étions en possession. Now, in your report, you helpfully list rapport, the various uh, physical conditions which you consider to have an impact on Nguyen Chia's health. Sur de the first de you list as cardiovascular lieu, disease, uh, and you report a history of hypertension going back over 30 years and ischemic heart disease. You also note that he's on treatment for heart failure and at present that his cardiovascular disease is stable. In uh, reaching that um, uh, assessment of his health, uh, you looked at other earlier records of Nguyen Chia's health status, I assume. Can you just, uh, very briefly, we don't want to go back over the many dozens of health reports that, uh, you will, that you have examined and that are held by the Chamber, but just very briefly uh, outline what assessment of previous clinical records you undertook. We had the reports from his doctors. We also reviewed the written material from his hospital admission, and we visited the hospital to review his X-rays and other laboratory results there. Can you tell the court, please, what conclusions you came to after uh, examining those reports and also examining uh, Nguyen Chia physically during your assessment of him. Well, Nguyen Chia is a frail elderly man at present. His frailty is due in part due to his age and his underlying health conditions, but is also due to a considerable degree due to his inactivity over recent years. He's really been taking no physical activity. He spends most of his day lying on his bed. Le plus clair de son temps, il le passe allongé so sur son lit. Donc, il n'est pas étonnant qu'il s'affaiblisse, que sa force musculaire s'affaiblisse et que les activités quotidiennes soient devenues pour lui difficiles. Did you observe Question. any changes in Nguyen Chia's cardiovascular state uh, from the time you last examined him uh, nearly two, oh, 18 months ago in 2011? No, I did not. His blood pressure is satisfactory. There are no signs of heart failure. And he does not have symptoms currently of angina or ischemic heart disease. 
or of heart failure and that he's not short of breath lying flat. Et il pas essoufflé quand il est allongé. Ça ne veut pas dire qu'il n'y a pas de maladie cardiaque sous-jacente grave. Question. Je passe au système respiratoire. Vous avez remarqué qu'il a été admis à l'hôpital pour une bronchite aiguë. Et vous avez dit qu'il a été admis à l'hôpital pour une bronchite aiguë. Diagnosis that this chamber was furnished with by his treating doctors. Can you expand on uh, that diagnosis uh, as to what it means for his current physical condition? He has uh, fully recovered from his bronchitis. He has no signs of chest infection at present. Des voies However, the importance of a condition fois, such as bronchitis is that because of his low physical reserve, he is very prone to intercurrent illness, très and intercurrent illness has a disproportionate effect on his well-being mm. Thank you. You specifically referred Question. to the possibility of Vous delirium, which uh, has an impact on his uh, abilities to participate in this trial. Is there any comment you want to make on the presence or otherwise of deli delirium? Delirium is an acute le state of confusion which can occur at any age group when the person has a febrile illness. As you get older, you are more prone to delirium. In our, di in our discussion with those looking after him, it certainly appeared as though he had an episode of delirium at the time of the bronchitis. But the delirium fully resolved, and it is certainly fully resolved with him at present. Actuellement, n'est pas un problème. Normally, only lasts a few days. En général, ça ne dure que quelques jours. Après quoi, ça se résorbe. Thank you. Well, turning now to the next physical condition that you assess as contributing to Nuenchia's frailty, cerebrovascular disease. You noted, as we have heard previously, that Nuenchia suffered a stroke in 1995, and you may recall at the last hearing uh, the diagnosis that you made, or rather the, your assessment of the diagnosis that had been made in 1995 and subsequently uh, was um, tested enthusiastically. Uh, would you uh, please explain very briefly Vous about uh, that stroke and whether it has an ongoing impact on his current AVC uh, health status? He had a stroke in 1995, which left him with a right-sided right weakness, from which he made a good recovery. There are very few signs of that now. He has slightly brisker reflexes in the right lower limb, which is consistent with a stroke, and he has a slight spastic catch in his right lower limb, which again is consistent with an old stroke. But there is no evidence clinically of any recent stroke, and there is no evidence on the CT scan that we reviewed of any recent stroke. So his weakness now is primarily due to his inactivity rather than any further strokes. Now, question. From common knowledge, often a stroke will have an impact on the uh, on the ability, the mental or cognitive ability of a patient, and I assume we'll cover that aspect when we turn to the overall assessment of his current mental health status uh, and cognitive ability. That is any connection with that stroke back in 1995. Uh, would you confirm that? Yes, cognition is normally affected if the outer area of the brain is affected, the cortex, or if there are multiple strokes. But there has never been any evidence of that with Nuanchia. 
Thank you. Uh, in this portion of your, exam your physical Dans examination of Nguyen Chia, uh, you referred to his complaint of dizziness. Would you expand uh, on that, please? Dizziness can cover a multitude of Les conditions, and I think with Nguyen Chia, it is primarily due to his unsteadiness when he is standing. He did complain of some when rolling over in bed. You can get some inner ear problems that cause trouble like that. But on normally when that's inner ear problem, there is a jerking of the eyes as well, and there was no evidence of that with Nguyen Chia. So I think his dizziness is primarily due to his unsteadiness, lack of confidence when he is upright. There is certainly no evidence of any drop in blood pressure when he stood. Thank you. Uh, now, moving to the next uh, aspect of his physical condition, musculoskeletal system, uh, could you please um, uh, summarize for the court the issues arising from what you describe as Nguyen Chia's long-standing degenerative back problems? Nguyen Chia does have a long history of back problems. And that's primarily wear and tear between the vertebrae and damage to the discs, cartilaginous discs, which lie between the vertebral bodies. There is no sign in examining his legs and his back of any nerve root compression that's affecting the nerves or expecting the spinal cord or the nerves running from the spinal cord, the so-called cord or equina. So on neurological examination, there's no sign of any spinal cord, cordoraquina, or nerve compression. So his back problems are primarily wear and tear, and are best dealt with by looking at his seating or lying position and by minor analgesics. And that is confirmed by the x-rays which we also reviewed. Thank you. Uh, turning now to uh, Nguyen Chia's gastrointestinal system, uh, you note uh, uh, one issue there. Could you just briefly and um, uh, without causing too much embarrassment describe what impact this issue has on his uh, general physical fitness? He does have a problem with constipation, and that again is primarily due to his inactivity, and this needs to be managed by regular laxatives to ensure it doesn't become a worse problem. Mm. Thank you. And uh, uh, again, in the same uh, part of the examination, you looked specifically at Nguyen Chia's vision. Can you um, uh, tell us uh, what the outcome of your examination was? Quel a été le résultat de votre auscultation? Nguyen Chia has bilateral cataracts. That means the lens of the eye is pacified so light doesn't get through clearly. Whether he has underlying problems behind at the back of the eye on the retina, it's impossible to tell because we can't get past the cataracts to see. That would require an ophthalmologist. He had difficulty reading ordinary newsprint size print but could read the headlines on the newspaper that we tested him with. So in terms of written material, it will not need to be either large print or recorded so he can play it for himself or read to him. And uh, what about Question. the uh, possibility of removal of those cataracts? Did you consider that? De retirer ces cataractes. I gather that has been considered Réponse. and not gone ahead with. His physical condition would not preclude removal of cataracts if that was what was advised by the ophthalmologist. It's not a big operation. 
finally, in this uh, section on his physical Dans status, sur, uh, uh, you addressed the whole question of um, Nguyen Chia's concerns about his fatigue. Could you summarize for the chamber uh, your findings in that regard, Yes, we considered this to be physical fatigue rather than mental fatigue. Given his general overall weakness and his lack of activity, any effort that he does have to put in, he finds very tiring. The only way to really improve that would be through an exercise program that increased his physical reserve so that day-to-day -day activities did not require as much higher portion of his strength as they do at present. Mm. Thank you. Now, you concluded Question. this section with some section, uh, recommendations. Rapport, uh, this relates to his physical condition. Uh, and um, uh, uh, could you just go through those recommendations, please, because the trial chamber uh, needs to have a clear effet, understanding of what uh, it might put in place to ensure that Nguyen Chia is as able to participate in his trial uh, physically as is uh, possible. Sur le plan de sa santé physique. The first recommendation is that Nguyen Chia use the holding Nguyen cell within the courtroom as necessary and that has the facilities the there for him. Le matériel nécessaire y est installé. Second, that Deuxièmement, his physical frailty is likely to increase if he's not got any exercise program to try and maintain his muscle bulk. So we've actually suggested either a physiotherapist or an exercise instructor institute a program for him that could be carried out under the supervision of the detention staff if he is willing to participate, and this would help maintain his physical strength and should also, if he were to participate, improve it. He didn't feel there was any need to change his cardiovascular medication. The problem with constipation we've already mentioned, and that will need to be kept a close eye on. As far as his back pain is concerned, Concernant I think that's been managed dos, as best it can être, with his seating or lying arrangements and minor analgesics. And I've commented on the way that material Nous should be presented to him, de la façon dont either on tapes soit or read to him, or possibly printed in large print. Lui lisant le contenu de document ou encore en les imprimant en grand. And also. Nguyen Chia lasted very well through the sessions we had with him. We did not, we did not feel there was any need to shorten the court sessions because of his fatigue or concentration. Uh, at the very end of your report, you Question. mentioned additional uh, proposals for uh, ensuring that Nguyen Chia is as comfortable as possible in the detention centre, uh, sorry, in the holding cell, following his removal from the detention centre each morning. Could you just briefly mention that at this stage, please? He does evidently find the transporting across from the detention centre to the holding cell tiring, and we've recommended that there be a reasonable space of time that he be transported across early enough for him to recover from the journey before the court starts. And that he have paracetamol, for example, available lui if the pain in the back becomes troublesome for him there. Si la Thank you. Well, uh, uh, in summarizing this uh, first section on Nguyen Chia's physical health, uh, I wonder, uh, and before we turn to the mental and cognitive health issues, I wonder if you feel able cognitive. to give a prognosis Je based si on Nguyen Chia's physical condition. 
sur la base de l'état de santé physique de Nunchia. C'est difficile. La vie est très imprévisible à 86 ans. C'est très imprévisible, surtout pour les problèmes de la santé. Comme je l'ai dit, toute maladie intercurrente aurait un effet disproportionné sur son bien-être général. Actuellement, du point de vue physique, il me semble qu'il est en assez bonne santé pour participer à son procès. But his prognosis does have to be very limited. Le pronostic doit être très limité et très limité. Well, are you able to be more? Question. Are you able to clarify that final statement? De préciser ce que vous avez dit. Vous avez dit plus limité, plus prudent. It is difficult. Réponse. One of the questions we ask ourselves is: Would we be surprised if this person was not alive in six months? Serions étonnés si cette personne était plus en vie dans six mois. Dans le cas de Nunchia, eh bien, nous ne serions pas étonnés. Thank you. Now, we'll move to the evaluation of Nunchia's mental health, prospective cognitive impairment, and. Uh, of course, his fitness to plead and stand trial, uh, as you have outlined in your report. Uh, can I just summarize the various um, assessments and examinations in general that you make before reaching conclusions on mental health and cognitive impairment in relation to Nunchia? Is it correct that first you review all relevant clinical records uh, going back as far as we have access to them? Is that correct? À tous les documents auxquels nous avons accès. Yes, we um, comprehensively oui. reviewed nous all the written records that were available to us. Les documents écrits dont nous disposons. And then, of course, you Question. interview all the Vous medical personnel who are treating Nuanchia uh, and those who are not necessarily medically qualified, but who assist him, perhaps detention center staff, on a very regular basis to gain their assessments of his mental health and cognitive impairment. Afin de voir ce que ces gens pensaient de la santé mentale et des fonctions cognitives de Nunchia. That is correct. We interviewed one of the treating physicians who is known in Chia. For over a year, and also we interviewed one person in particular in the detention staff. A member of the personnel in the detention staff for two years. He knows Nunchia for two years. Yes. And then the third limb of your very broad assessment is uh, that you interview Nunchia himself, and on this occasion, uh, you did this over. Uh, intensively over two or three uh, periods, uh, and you were examining him with a view to considering his memory, his uh, the accuracy of his memory, his understanding, and his concentration uh, through your personal assessment of him. Yes. À une évaluation à laquelle yes. vous avez procédé personnellement. Um, exact we réponse? reviewed oui. uh, Nunchia's mental state on three occasions uh, over quite long interviews. Um, long and entretiens. on one other occasion, uh, Professor Campbell, autre fois, um, le professeur Campbell on the 20th March, also uh, examined mars, him uh, examiné physically Nunchia for an additional examination. So it was actually over a period of three days Donc that examinations were conducted. Two of those days we focused on mental health jours, um, and to some extent physical health. Sur la santé mentale, um, et dans une certaine mesure uh, sur la santé physique. Uh, and then Question. the final uh, tool that you use is to conduct screening tests for cognitive impairment, and in this case, uh, and we'll go into the detail shortly, you also conducted some other uh, tests which uh, you felt would be useful in Nuanchia's case. Is that correct? That is correct. We use some uh, standardized tests which um, assist us in our 
assessment then don't replace the assessment, they're purely adjuncts or things that help focus our assessments and um, guide our assessments. Well, starting then with the interviews you had of medical personnel and les who, avec le personnel médical uh, assist et avec les gens on a daily basis uh, could you summarize please uh, the results of your discussions with those personnel yes um, oui. in summary the information we received from these individuals was that um, Nunchir's memory was reasonably good. He remembered uh, items, people, facts that um, went back some time. They didn't feel there was any obvious change in memory, specifically they didn't feel his memory was getting worse. And in addition, they felt uh, his concentration appeared to be good. He was able to listen to the radio in his cell for long periods of time. And finally, there was no evidence of any depression or other mental illness from their perspective. His mood was appropriate, normal, uh, not obviously depressed. Uh, and that was true both of the medically qualified personnel and the ones who attended him daily. Uh, you specify one of the detention center staff in that uh, regard. Yes, that was a consistent picture that was built up. Um, from medical and detention staff, but it was with the medical staff that we um, asked in much more detail about these issues. Now the next portion of your report deals with the review uh, that you made of relevant um, uh, medical or clinical records. Uh, you note that there has been no previous direct assessment by a psychiatrist, to your knowledge. Uh, but could you please uh, summarize for the chamber the results of your review of the relevant medical clinical records? Yes. Um, we noted that uh, some uh, two psychiatrists had tried to assess Lin in 2009, but were not able to. But they reviewed all the medical records that were available to them at the time and came to the view that there were no symptoms of mental disorder and that his short-term memory appeared to be consistent with his age. So that's on the basis of reviewing the records uh, in late 2009 going backwards. In addition, uh, other medical, uh, medically trained individuals have assessed Nun Chia, and although they're not psychiatrists, they have nevertheless commented on his mental state, and in particular, Professor Lafont, who's a cardiologist uh, based in France, noted um, that there were no signs of dementia in reports that he wrote in 2008 and 2011. There's one other examination which we highlight that's from a neurologist who's a Cambodian neurologist working as one of the treating team and they conducted a test of memory and cognition in February 2011 and that test was normal uh, so specifically there was no obvious signs of impairment to short-term memory or attention or concentration based on a simple screening test that was um, conducted.
Uh, and just going Mr. back briefly to the report from the two psychiatrists from 2009, was their inability to examine Nguyen Chia for his um, uh, mental health or cognitive status uh, because Nguyen Chia did not feel that he needed to have Pourquoi such an assessment at that stage. Yes, that's our understanding that he refused to um, participate in the assessment. You mention in this part of your uh, report the uh, report of Professor Campbell completed in, on the 13th of June last year. Perhaps we'll come back to that when we look at the standardized tests, because there will be an interesting uh, uh, vari variation between 2011 and currently, and maybe it's better disposed of there. Now, you specifically, as you have said, uh, assessed Nguyen Chia's mental state on three occasions over the 18th and 19th of March. Could you give us some more details concerning that, uh, as those assessments, please, the period oui, over which they were conducted, uh, and secondly, your um, findings. Yes. Um, we, as you say, um, conducted en three effet, assessments of Nunchi's mental dites, state. The first assessment lasted from uh, 10, 10 past 10 in the morning to 11.55. Uh, the second assessment lasted about 90 minutes on the uh, same afternoon. And the third assessment was on the following morning and lasted from 9.30 to 11.50. So over two hours the final assessment lasted. And uh, we found that Nguyen Chia was able to concentrate well over those three interviews, no obvious difficulty. He responded uh, clearly to our questions, did not obviously tire. He was um, lying in his bed, so um, we specifically noted he didn't tire mentally or physically, but he was lying in his bed. He remained alert throughout um, and was uh, open and cooperative throughout our th uh, all our interviews, actually, um, including those three that I've just mentioned. Now, over the next few parts of your report, Question. you uh, go into Dans some detail as to the type of um, questions you asked Nguyen Chia, the type de uh, que could vous avez you à Nguyen Chia? summarize your findings that uh, you reached as a, as a result of these questions? Perhaps just very briefly mention the types of topics that you covered. And maybe you can remember the subjects that you have abordés with Nguyen Chia. So uh, there were three types of um, topics we covered. They were broadly trying to look at uh, long-term memory, so memory from uh, many years ago, but also short-term memory, that's memory over the last few hours or few minutes. And um, in both cases, long-term and short-term memory, we found uh, good evidence that these were well-preserved. So we asked questions about Nunchi's childhood, his um, schooling, his um, career, um, as uh, uh, when he worked, but also we asked questions about the uh, period in the 1970s um, and subsequent to that. In addition, we asked questions about um, 
what had happened on the day of our interviews, nous what he'd had for lunch, um, what, what he had heard on the radio, so questions also about the more recent past. Um, and in addition, we asked some specific memory tests which um, assess memory over a short period of time, i.e. a few minutes. Um, so this was broadly um, the areas that we covered, long-term and short-term memory, and overall we felt there was good preservation of both these areas. Now, uh, by and large, according to Question. your report, and as you have just summarized, you concluded Donc, rapport, that his long-term and short-term memories uh, are well preserved. There was just the one area where he um, bonne, had some difficulty being very precise. Uh, could you just very, uh, very much in summary cover that, please? Nous en dire plus? Was, uh, there were some um, areas where um, Nunche wasn't very precise. For oui. example, um, he uh, sometimes uh, couldn't remember the exact names of some of his family members. We didn't push, um, we, we didn't uh, pursue this in a lot of detail, um, and it was our impression that it was partly to do with lack of interest um, and also lack of contact with uh, some of his uh, um, family members. Um, but on the other hand, there was a quite precise recollection of other details in his um, past. Um, and so again, our overall impression was good, at good evidence of preservation of long-term memory. What about his mood? Did you examine uh, Nuenchia and uh, uh, ask him questions concerning problems with his mood? Uh, we did. Uh, this was Réponse. an important part of our um, assessment. Um, we asked questions, uh, as I've previously uh, mentioned of uh, the medical and detention staff about mood, but also we asked Nunchia directly about mood and he did not complain of any mood symptoms. His um, sleep appeared uh, to be unchanged for, for some years. Um, and also on examination, we noted that um, his mood appeared normal. He Occasionally, he laughed uh, during interviews at appropriate times. Um, he also became upset at one moment at an appropriate occasion, and that's all an indication that the mood is normal, it reacts appropriately, it's not restricted or, um, or, or, or just depressed. Um, it, it's, on the other hand, it's uh, reactive in, in medical jargon, um, which means that it's normal and reacts appropriately. Turning now then to the uh, tests that you administered, uh, you um, conducted a number of cognitive tests, which you've already explained are there to help you focus your examination on his mental or cognitive status. Uh, and by cognitive. that I infer that you don't want us to put our entire weight on the no, findings from those tests. Uh, nonetheless, as the result generally of all of these tests, did they change the focus of your attention from um, uh, or, or change your views uh, on his tests, mental health or cognitive status after your examination of him? No, the tests were consistent with our clinical examination. They were consistent with um, also the information received from medical and detention staff, and they were consistent with 
all the previous uh, assessments and reports that were done. So our view is they're entirely consistent with uh, all the information that um, we've reviewed and also our clinical examination. The uh, first of those tests, Question. the Mini Mental State Examination, or MMSE, MMSE. Uh, had been previously conducted in 2011 by Professor Campbell, but you repeated it on this occasion, is that correct? Yes, um, it was uh, previously um, completed by also a Cambodian neurologist, uh, Dr. Sina, Ross Sina, uh, and we repeated it on this occasion. Uh, and uh, that is a test for screening for cognitive impairment. Uh, and um, can you just um, uh, summarize for the chamber First, the scores and their significance, this, the scores achieved by Nguyen Chia and their significance in the context of this uh, cognitive assessment. And secondly, contrast the two scores from 2011 and today. Uh, yes, um, so the mini mental state examination um, is scored out of a maximum score of 30, so the higher you score, the uh, less evidence there is of any cognitive impairment. Nunchia um, scored 28 out of 30 on consecutive days, that is on the two days that we performed the tests, and a score of 23 or less is considered to be indicative of cognitive impairment and would normally warrant further assessment. So a score above 23 uh, is, is not an indication to look any further and is essentially viewed as a normal score. So his score of 28 is, is a good score for an individual who's aged 86. Um, and within the test, there are, within the screen, there are tests of short-term memory, which he performed, performed well on. There's also a brief test of concentration, which he also performed well on. So in summary, um, a score of 28 is normal from our perspective. We would not place any importance on it having changed from 28, um, from 30 two years ago to 28 because there is a normal degree of variability so from day to day you can change your score by one or two, two points and therefore over two years a decline of two points is not of any clinical significance. I'm actually going to ask Professor Campbell to add to this. Um, yes, I would certainly endorse that. A score of 28 out of 30, given some of his physical difficulties, for example, his poor sight, was a very satisfactory score, and there was no indication on the MMSE of any cognitive impairment. Thank you. Um, you went on to administer three other uh, tests, which you describe as tests of attention. Uh, which form part of, of what's known as the Montreal Cognitive Assessment. Uh, can you uh, describe your findings from those three tests of attention? Yes, these tests of attention um, measure or test attention in different ways, and uh, Munchia scored uh, well on these tests. Um, he scored out of a maximum score of six, he scored five, which we viewed as, as a good score, and that's in the context of 
Another test of concentration which I mentioned is in the mini mental state examination, which you also scored very well in. So overall, we felt that the tests of attention and concentration um, were consistent with what we saw in our clinical interviews, which was that he was able to maintain good levels, high levels of concentration and attention um, for long periods of time. And there was one more test that you uh, conducted, known as a frontal assessment battery screening measure. Can you describe the purpose of that test and your findings as a result of uh, administering it? Ce test et les conclusions que vous avez tirées. Frontal lobe is the lobe that has to do with initiative, drive, and inhibition. And frontal lobe function isn't well tested on the MMSE. So we did the frontal battery, and he has again scored well on that. There was no indication of frontal lobe problems. There are particular dimensions that affect the frontal lobe, but there was certainly no indication of that with no onchea. Thank you. Now, uh, you considered again Question. the criteria for fitness to plead and stand Vous trial, uh, known as the Strugar tests, uh, being Vous a case where they were conveniently uh, summarized and brought together. And in the course of the assessment of Nuanchia, you had those uh, various. Uh, uh, categories or capacities in mind. Vous avez gardé um, en tête ces you cette faculté then you decided to uh, administer uh, what you describe as a semi-structured instrument Et called the Competency to Stand Trial Assessment Instrument. Could you uh, describe what you felt this uh, assessment would achieve and your uh, findings as a result of it. Well, we focused very much on the criteria that are outlined in the Strugar case. Um, and as part of that, we looked at um, this particular instrument uh, called the Competency to Stand Trial Assessment Donc, Instrument which um, we um, drew on its broad outlines because it details some of the criteria. Um, it gives examples of the sorts of questions or areas that you can examine for each one of the criteria, so in more detail. So it's something that we drew on, it again um, assisted us, um, but was really an adjunct or an uh, auxiliary um, uh, set of uh, questions that we drew on um, that helped us um, structure our questions. Um, uh, but uh, as I say, the focus was on the Struga criteria. Running through those criteria, uh, what do you have to say about Nguyen Chia's understanding of um, uh, his guilt or innocence in relation to these charges? Que pouvez-vous nous dire à propos de la compréhension qu'a Nguyen Chia des accusations qui pèsent sur lui? Uh, we felt he um, understood um, the difference between uh, guilty and not guilty, and we felt that he had a clear view that um, he did not believe that he was guilty, um, and he um, re repeated this on a number of occasions throughout our interviews, saying that um, he denies the charges. Um, uh, and what about his, uh, uh, your assessment of his basic understanding of the nature of the charges? 
uh, we felt he had a basic we, he did have a basic understanding um, specifically we asked him uh, what the charges were and he said he had been accused of uh, genocide and war crimes and he also said that he was aware that uh, crimes against humanity was a common accusation made towards the Khmer Rouge. When we asked him sp specifically what he understood by these charges, he um, said to us that uh, genocide meant uh, killing of one's own race. When we asked him about uh, what he understood to be torture, he said that um, it would include beating and imprisonment, and he used the term maltreatment. And then we asked him about the charge of forced evacuation of people. Again, he said that um, uh, we had to move uh, people from one place to another. Our view was that that was an understanding of the charges, a basic understanding of that charge. Um, and furthermore, we asked him specifically about what he understood by persecution of peoples. And um, again, our feeling was that he had a basic understanding of that. And he said that in response to that, that there were no acts of killing of people, um, torture of people, and again, our view is that he had an understanding of these charges at a basic level. Thank you. Uh, how did you, uh, what conclusion did you come to when you assessed his understanding of court procedures, uh, the role and uh, material provided by witnesses, lawyers, judges? Um, uh, and the ability to comment intelligently on those matters. What do you understand? What level of understanding do you assess him as having? We, we thought he had um, a, a, an ability to follow the course of the proceedings. Um, he didn't uh, appear to have any problems understanding questions we put to him over three long interviews. And he explained his position quite coherently over our interviews in relation to the charges. He gave um, consistent and coherent explanations over the two days. And he seemed to have... Um, a uh, basic understanding of the court process and procedures. He understood the role of the judges and he understood a decision to be made collectively by the judges. And um, he even said that he um, uh, thought that any decision made uh, collectively would be reasonable, um, and um, he understood that he would have. Um, his legal team represent him. Um, so we thought he had a good understanding of um, the course of legal proceedings. Uh, you um, focused also on his uh, capacity to understand details of evidence and to, um, in effect, instruct or inform counsel of his views of the evidence. Uh, what conclusions did you reach under this heading? Well, we thought, we, we thought he had, um, he, he understood the details of the evidence and he was able to put forward his version of events to counsel and um, discuss that version of events. Um, so that was the impression we had over our interviews. He gave um, specific examples of the type of defenses that he was planning to raise. 
Um, and again, these were consistent over the interviews that we conducted. They appeared to us to be coherent. Um, they were intelligible to us. Um, so um, uh, there was an overall picture in our minds that he was able to understand the details of the evidence and also um, put forward his version of events. Uh, in that same part of your report, Question you refer again to the difficulties uh, uh, la difficulté concerning details of evidence due to his impaired sight, um, but you also des comment des on his ability to concentrate. Could you uh, summarize that for the chamber, please? Yes, um, it's really repeating what uh, Professor Campbell said earlier that um, he would be able to um, understand and uh, comprehend material if it's read out to him or if the me reading material is enlarged um, and in terms of concentration Based on our interviews, um, one of which was two hours, 20 minutes uh, long, um, we felt that um, he would be able to concentrate um, over uh, court sessions and uh, be able to uh, participate meaningfully um, on the basis of his uh, concentration and his memory. Uh, the next category overlaps with some of your prior findings, but um, your comments, Question. please, on his ability to cooperate with counsel and uh, instruct counsel uh, in preparation of his defence. De donner des instructions à son avocat dans le cadre de la préparation de sa défense. Yes. Um, we were of the opinion that he did oui, have the capacity to instruct counsel and cooperate with his lawyers. He was able to name his uh, national counsel. Um, he explained that his lawyers have helped him, uh, that he was happy with them, that he believed that they were working only for him in this case and that they were um, defending him. So he, um, by, by that, we um, took to, we, we, we came to the opinion that he was able to instruct counsel. You assist Question. him also on uh, his understanding of the consequences should a conviction uh, be the outcome of this trial. Can you comment on that, de please? Pourriez-vous commenter cela? Yes. Um, we formed the view that Nunchia had a clear understanding of the consequences of any um, uh, finding of a trial. He explained that um, if he was found guilty, one possibility was life imprisonment. And he also added that um, he wouldn't receive capital punishment because it wasn't part of national law, na national law. Um, in addition, he said if he was uh, found not guilty um, by the court, um, he said that the court must release him. So he understood that uh, um, he would be acquitted if he was found not guilty. Finally, in this segment, uh, you comment on his current ability to testify. Can you summarize for the court? Yes, our feeling was that he did have the ability to testify currently. He understood that uh, he would receive questions from um, different lawyers, including uh, his defense team, but also the prosecution. Um, he understood that uh, the uh, 
court was trying to find, in his words, the truth, and he said that um, he would be willing to speak in court, um, uh, but did point out that his health made it very difficult for him to do so, um, and said that as a consequence, uh, he would be willing to give evidence on video link. Overall, uh, in relation to uh, Nguyen Chia's mental health or cognitive abilities, do you have any recommendations to make? No, um, his uh, mental health is currently good, his cognitive function is currently good, and um, we note he listens to the radio, he uh, talks to uh, staff in the detention center, so he maintains a reasonable level of cognitive function, so we have no specific recommendations. However, no, I'm not going to say any more. No, I'm going to stay there. President, uh, that concludes the uh, major part of the questions that I wish to put to these two experts. Uh, perhaps if we took the morning uh, break now, and then we can go back over their con overall conclusions when we return. Thank you, President. Well, the President, uh, thank you, Merci Judge Cartwright, and thank Cartwright. you, the experts. Merci aux experts. It is now appropriate time Le for est venu the adjournment. The Chamber will adjourn pause. for 20 minutes. Dans Court officer minutes. is now instructed to assist uh, the two experts during the adjournment and have them return to the courtroom when the next session resumes.